Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have a big unboxing. This time, it's Secrets of a Lost Tomb, the cooperative pulp action adventure board game brought to you by Everything Epic. This is an action-packed game of immersive story-driven themes and strategic tomb exploration for the fate of the world. A board game for one to six brave adventurers. This is what we call a massive, massive box. This game is for one to six players for ages 13 plus and it takes about an hour and 20 minutes in which to play. The greatest adventure for the fate of the world. Every 113 years when a three-tailed comet appears in the sky, an ancient and magical tomb materializes somewhere on our planet. The enigmatic tomb holds the treasures of countless lost worlds and places out of myth. El Dorado, Shangri-La, Atlantis, Avalon, Mount Olympus, and Valhalla. Older than civilization itself, it's a place of ancient artifacts, mystical treasures, and forbidden secrets, hidden away out of the hands of mankind. As a member of the Eternal Order of Perseus, you and your comrades have been protecting the world against evil supernatural powers as the ultimate guardians of the world. Oldest secrets and unknown mysteries so powerful that, in the wrong hands, they could alter the course of fate itself. Secrets of the Lost Tomb is an epic cooperative adventure board game set in the pulp action universe for one to six players. You'll choose a brave adventure to discover your path through this highly replayable game, progressing through thematic, story-driven, and action-packed scenarios, exploring randomly drawn rooms, fighting hordes of challenging creatures, finding useful equipment, powerful artifacts, and companions in the tomb. Each scenario escalates towards a climactic cliffhanger clash between the forces of good of, and evil. In addition to the main modes of play, there's also a solo play mode, as well as competitive modes, such as survival and capture the grail. Loaded with replayable content, such as seven diverse scenarios, 15 unique characters, 52 different room tiles, 500 cards, 100 of tokens, custom dice, and so much more. Secrets of the Lost Tomb is your calling. So grab your hat and whip and prepare to save the world in this epic adventure of a lifetime. So there you are. Here's a picture of how the board will look as it's set up. And down at the bottom, it tells you all kinds of the contents. Right there, again, this was released in 2015 by Everything epic from uh and their p.o box is here in new jersey in milburn new jersey this is the first edition of the game i believe it's in kickstarter again and they're re-releasing either a second edition or a 10-year anniversary of it or whatever it may be so again this game is for one to six players for ages 13 and up and it takes about 120 minutes to play or two hours so this one's going to be a beast so sit back relax let me do the unboxing for you and please enjoy yourself. Grab yourself a drink and some food because this one's going to take a little while. So let us get cracking here. So let's uh, crack open this bad boy and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. Again, I picked I picked this up in the aftermarket. So all the uh, tokens have been uh, broken out and everything is here. And this is a, as you can tell, it is truly a ginormous game. So... Like I'm saying, too, uh, we're going to try to fit this all on the table as best we can. So, starting off, as we always do, we have the rule book. Now, this rule book is quite, it says lost tome, uh, tomb, but this is a tome. This is a pretty thick uh, rule book here. So, as you can tell, we've got lots of information here. Everything epic, again, for more information, go visit them at everythingepic.com. So let's see what we got here. So you got the Legend of the Tomb, an overview. Secrets of the Lost Tomb is a proper game where the players are part of an elite expedition comprised of members of a secret society called the Eternal Order of Perseus, founded to protect the secrets of the tomb and to secure the locations the tomb has once been. To accomplish this, the EOP dispatches its members all over the world to keep the supernatural and the otherworldly out of sight and out of mind of humanity. 
The Secrets of the Lost Tomb, each player controls one or more adventurers. In this rulebook, the word adventurer refers to both the player controlling the adventurer and the adventurer, him or her self. Got tired of reading the rulebook already? Go to secretsoflosttomb.com. Got more questions? Call up Chris at everythingepicgames.com. All right, and we've got the letter. Use uh, the compass. And let's get rolling. Okay, again, right here is everything that's included in the box. We're about to see a bird's eye view of that component assembly. We've got also we got game setup. We got choose a scenario, set up the starting room tiles, organize components, choose your expedition leader, choose and set up adventurers, read mission briefing, and begin play. So they're showing us a six-player setup right here. There we go. Again, you need a big table to play this game here. Uh, you got adventurers, and of course, they all the adventurers have different attributes. You have strength, dexterity, mythos, knowledge, audacity, movement, health, and courage. Health and dying, when you reach zero hit points, you die. Once an adventurer dies, advance the comet track by one. You've got courage bonuses and penalties. You got fleeing the tomb, saving an adventurer from fleeing the tomb, special abilities. And then it gives you anatomy of the adventure sheet, which we have right here. Okay, moving on, we've got the dice and dice checks. Lots of dice. Uh, there's 12 sided dice with one to six printed twice. Uh, we've got that audacity, audacity checks. So we got one is a critical failure, meaning you, you, if you roll a one, it's never successful. And six is a critical, so critical success. Five is a success. Six is a critical success. So you get bonuses with that. The golden rule. Many components state effects that contradict rules in this rulebook. Text on components always supersedes text in this rulebook. Object of the game. We get to that finally. Secrets of the Lost Tomb has many scenarios, each with its own objectives. These scenarios are described in detail in a scenario booklet. In each scenario, the adventurers will win or lose as a team, evading traps and mystic dangers as they explore the tomb. Will you claim victory or lose a at terrible cost? And there's the tomb, how to play the game, the adventure phase, the tomb phase, and then you have adventure actions. You can move, you can explore, you can attempt to evade during combat, you can attempt to evade, lose courage, choose a weapon and armor, roll combat checks, deal damage and resolve criticals, gain soul shards. You can trade, example of trading, if you're standing next to someone, you could trade an item that you have. Example of searching, using an item or an artifact, using special abilities, resting to heal up, deal with the soul monger, soul shards, stealing. That's an example of what a tile looks like. And there are your action bullets, keeping track of your action. Then you have example of the adventure phase here. We're flipping this, flipping that, and doing all the things you need to do. More examples, more examples. Eight beautiful examples. Full color in the book, as you can tell. Then we move on to the tomb phase. Tomb effects, move creatures, initiate combat, spawn creatures, tomb creature limit, upkeep, search, comet track, check for end game. Each scenario has its own win and loss conditions. Often, if the comet track reaches a certain point, a boss creature emerges. If all players are dead or have fled the tomb, and they have no more adventures to choose from, the adventurers lose. Fantastic. All right, example of the tomb phase, move creatures, spawn creatures, creature combat, upkeep, turn search tokens, and the comet track. Rooms exploring, you can explore rooms. You have stairs of blood, sacrificial chambers. You have story effects, misadventures, adventures, symbols on room tiles. You have an adventure or misadventure, exploration effects, trap effects, action effects, ongoing effects, artifact rooms, soulmonger rooms, soulmonger store, rooms leading to level three in the core set, pitfall, mine shaft, the arc portal, and stairs of blood, the anatomy of a room tile, and an explanation down at the bottom. Many effects prompt a plus X or minus X followed by a card type or attribute. Example, plus one mythos. 
per card type, draw, discard those cards for an attribute, track it using attribute bonus tokens. Coming over here, you got example of exploring a room. How do you do that? Example of resolving a story card. Then you may run into some creatures, which you will. You have base. There's a difference between base and elite creatures. You have swarm creatures. You have boss creatures. And, of course, they give you the anatomy of the boss and any card so you can read it very, very quickly. Type name, special text, movement, courage attack, combat rating, armor, health, evasion, difficulty, and soul shards. The number of soul shards it drops when he is killed. So you get 17 soul shards right there. Okay. Combat. Attempt to evade, lose courage, choose weapons and armor, roll combat checks, check your attribute, the combat bonuses, and outnumber bonuses. Resolve damage and criticals, base defense, final defense, final damage, defeating creatures, and area combat. And here's another example in the book. One thing I like about this uh, rule book right off the bat is that they give you a considerable amount of examples throughout the rule book. So if you ever get lost or confused, go back and just check this again because they have everything in full color and go step by step of the process. Because I, when I first opened the box, I was a little overwhelmed by it because there's so much stuff in there. But at the same time, once you kind of get the hang of it, you really get the hang of it. Creature versus creature combat, adventure versus adventurer combat, uh, creature versus creature, some more examples down here. Items, artifacts, companions, and weapons. You can exhaust attribute requirements, attribute bonuses, carrying and dropping. Companions, weapons, weapon strength, weapon dexterity. You also have knowledge weapons and mythos weapons. Example of refreshing your weapons. Status effects, mental, physical, supernatural, positive or negative orientation. Removing status effects. Becoming fully infected or other traitor rules, alternative infected rules. So if you get infected, you might want to take on your other compatriots who are in the tomb with you. How to play the scenarios, picking a scenario, reading the scenario, running the scenario. More detailed information here. It tells you, of course, the curse of the mummy. The, the first potent talisman, the staff of Ra. The third potent talisman, the cowl of Anubis. Winning conditions losing conditions then you got alternate modes of play you have solo play rules for competitive play capture the grail set up for capture the grail playing capture the grail survival mode soul shard rewards for survival mode additional creature spawns and then of course they offer you all kinds of expansion packs for new room tiles story cards creatures items scenarios and more secret of the lost tomb adventure packs and tile expansion packs of course you can pick those up none of them are, are, are included in this core box which i've picked up again dedicated to the best backers in the world so this was originally a kickstarter and here you go lots of people who uh gave in all of their cash to make sure that this came alive and there's your index of all the key terms that you need to know to play this game and even more backers on that page there as well again i did not back this i picked this, this up on facebook marketplace and then on the back of the uh, inside of the back cover, you have the player reference sheets, which are right here. All the symbols of the game guide right there. And there are a ton of symbols, as you see right there. Different phases of the game. Again, it's the adventure phase, the tomb phase, and the combat phase. And going to the last page, Soulmonger inventory, Soulmonger items, Soulmonger services. We got that guy right down who's a Soulmonger. And you got your search chart. Down here it says, for printable player resources, tutorials, and frequently asked questions, please visit secretsofthelosttomb.com. So there you are. That is your rule book. Now we're going to move on to, what is this? We have an extra player aid, which is right here as well, which is cool. Glad we have that. That's a player reference. We'll put that on the side right there next to it. And then we also have Secrets of the Lost Tomb from the EOP Archives, the core scenario book. You have that. So in here, there was a total, I forgot to mention, there is a total of 31 pages of 
how to play guide right there. So the, the rule book is 31 pages in length. Course scenario book. Again, tells you about the tomb setup, winning conditions, losing conditions, special rules. Uh, so we start here with the Pharaoh with blue eyes. We have Sidero, Curse of the Mummy. First potent talisman, the Star of the Staff of Ra. The second potent talisman, the Ruby Scarab. And the third potent talisman, the Cowl of Anubis. Again, I don't want to read too much about it because I do not want to ruin the experience. Awakening Raz Az, Azul's Ahmet. Rules for Raz, winning and losing. Players win if you do this. Players lose if you do that. Players lose. Raz Azul Ahmet escape the tomb. Next scenario. One if by land, two if by sea. The story of the Colossus of the land and the, the Kraken of the sea. Strategy, again, tomb setup. Roll a nine. You got win conditions, lose conditions, special rules, spe scenario triggered effects. You have finding the code for the Franklin Cipher, finding a code for the Franklin Cipher, and something else, recovering the Liberty Key. You've got the Kraken Awakens, rules for the Kraken, Kraken shakes the tomb, the Wendega activating the keystone, the Wendega lives. Rules for the Wendega, winning and losing. Move on to the next scenario, the Forsaken, true vengeance of the Greek gods. You've got the setup, the tomb setup. You've got here the winning conditions, losing conditions, special rules, all that stuff. Finding a forsaken, finding a pair of forsaken, rules for the forsaken, finding the urn of divergence, cursing forsaken with the urn, spawning Prince Barum, the forsaken, rules for Prince Barum, curse of the forsaken, and becoming a forsaken yourself. Then the winning for the players, lose for the players, and moving on. What happens also if you all lose, everybody dies or fled or have been infected. What if you kill too many Forsakens? You also lose because of that. The Legend of Herathulu, the Herald of Cthulhu. There's your tomb setup. Strategy, win conditions, lose conditions, special rules. Scenario triggered effects. Gate portal appears with base creature. Gate portal appears with elite creature. Rules for the gate portals. Rules for challenging gate guardian. Rules for closing gates. Moving on, we have spawning Herathulu. Rules for Herathulu. Herathulu opens a portal. The Herald's Horn. The Call of Cthulhu. Portals to the First Plains. Lots of creatures you'll be fighting with. Then you've got the portals to the Second Plains. Portals to the Third Plains. Winning and losing, and then on to another mission. The Collective, again, Tomb Setup, Strategy, Win, Lose Condition, Special Rules. You find a Power Crystal, Rescue a Companion. Rescue a Companion guarded by Elite Creature. Rules for Rescuing and Testing Companions. Protean Arrives. The Armies of Doppelgangers, Rules for Doppelgangers. Rules for Protean, the ever-changing, winning and losing. A great picture of the creature. Moving on. The Bane of Blackbeard. Tomb setup, strategy, win and lose conditions, special rules, scenario, triggered effects, what you need from the box. You find a key, spawn Blackbeard's keepers, the six temptations of demons, rest, all, reset all traps, rules for Gallows Road. Releasing the EOP member. Rules for the released EOP member. Spawning Blackbeard. Joining Blackbeard. Players win. Players lose. If EOP members was sacrificed. Players lose. EOP member died. Or traitors win. Oh my, oh, on my Odo. The legend of the Manas Moon Swords. You got the tomb set up. Win conditions, your strategy, your lose condition, official rules, scenario, triggered effects, saving the children, saving a ronin from seppuku, recover the sword, read upon entering the tomb. Anibo dies, players win, players lose, and there's the character that you will be fighting. So you have 35 pages of different scenarios. You have a player reference on the back of that. 
pages of the game again all symbols of game in the guide same thing that's there it's right here on the back of this one so there you go got almost 20 minutes of going through the core book uh the, the rule book and the core scenario book and of course we also took a look at our reference sheet here so what are we going to start off with? all right so we're going to start off first off i got a bag of standees so we have some characters and we have standees for them they come in white and they come in red so i don't need to take those off but you get a whole bag full of them for the different characters that you will control you have the spinner here which starts at zero and makes it way around to 20. Again, everything is unpunched because this was bought uh, again second hand again one for 20. there it is right there we'll put this over here as well dice oh you got a, a plenty of dice so let's see what we got in here all different kinds of dice in here. and you got a tremendous amount of dice here so the dies let's see are they all the same I don't think so. So you got a lot of different dice in here. So let's just take a look at this one. You got a one, you got the two, three, four. The five has that icon on it. And then you got six has a Tommy gun on it. And there you go. And they're repeating again. All the dice are 12 sided. So they're a D12, but they're, again, the icons on them change. So there's one, that's one of those. So you got two, three, four, six is a Tommy gun. You got this thing on there and you got a, that thing on there for number five. So I guess ones and fives this time. Okay, you got a lot of different kinds of dice here. And that's the five, it's the same as the one we just went over. Oh, that's another one they got there. Okay, so you got a couple of those. So it looks like all the dice fall into two categories, so that's good. There's another one that way. All right, that's got the Tommy gun and the fire on it. Okay, and the five. Okay, so we've got a tremendous amount of die. Again, they're, they're all D12s, and there they are. The markings are similar on all of them, but again, when you go through them, just make sure you check them. Make sure you, you're rolling the right dice. Because it looks like there are some variations on the dice. Not too many variations, but you have a couple. So you get a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 different die. And a cool bag in the game. So that's a lot of dice for one game. A lot, a lot, a lot of dice. Okay, moving on. You have your character cards you have your character cards right. so we're going to do go through it this way so let's take a look at some of these cards that are included they are front and back there's a lot of information that you have here a tremendous amount of information here just want to let you know that right off the bat so let's take it this one you have the rough rider four three four five four your strength dexterity knowledge mythos and movement Again, here are all your icons that have to deal with those up here. Speak softly once per round as a fire act, a free action. This target adventure gains this equal to success roll, maybe above that. Carry big sticks. If you lose blank, you only lose half the required amount rounded down. Okay, starting stats, zero, 16, zero starting items, Bowie knife and a Winchester rifle. May not lose courage from creatures, plus two, plus two. When you lose this, use that instead, minus two and minus two. On the back, it gives you a bunch of background, the biography of the character, character's name, date of birth, gender, origin, call sign, zodiac, best attribute, weakness, and skills. So I'm not gonna read through this with all the cards, but all the cards are set up identically. So you have the Rough Rider, you have the Saint, you have Deadeye, You have Lady Lindy. You have Libby Villa. 
your Professor Forrestal, you have Christopher St. George, you have Lady Rocket, Alligator McPhee, Harrison Quatermanis the 13th, you have General Drake, Haji Singh, Joa Deeb, James T. Temple, Bianca Sinclair, Heidi DuPont, Chang Li Tao, Iron O. Sullivan, A.J. Wegman. Also, because I bought this in the secondhand market, I also had three additional characters that were also included with the purchase. So the other three characters that are in there are you have Adam Van Helsing, uh, this card here. I got a second Adam Van Helsing card. And I got one of my pulp, favorite Pulp Hero characters, Vamprella. From Harris and Dynamite Comics. So I gotta love Vamprella. So I'm glad we have her taking the reins of action as well. So we'll put those character cards up there. And you also have, for the standees, you also have the different characters uh, standees. So you got your Vamprella. Again, standees, they're all the just a picture on the front and the back. There they are. Front and backs are the same. They have one for each of the characters. And again, you have Van Helsing. These guys. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm wrong in that. Maybe these are not who I thought they were. Uh, I'm going to put those two to the side for a second because maybe I'm going to be corrected on that. We'll put these guys to the side here, too. Put those over here because I just found Vamprella. Okay, so I, I thought that was wrong. You got these guys again. Then you got two Vamprellas. There's your Van Helsing. I'm sorry about that. Some more guys. And your last guy. And of course, you get a cool baggie to go with that as well you also have miniatures that were included in this purchase as well we'll get back to those in a little bit though let's get through the core stuff that we really need to get through so we have this cool box here with all our tokens in it so we have different kinds of tokens for the game i'm not going to pull them all out because we're all pre-separated so you got action and reload bullets are very very helpful so you got a bunch of those you get tokens that look like this say plus one or plus two on them ones that are like this plus two and plus one and these little tokens over here this is plus two and plus one You have these blue and green ones over here. There's plus two and plus one on them. You have this one over here, which is different than the other ones that we've looked at already. They look very similar, but they're different. So you got plus one there and plus two on the other side. You have just like some yellow orb right there. You've got these cool triangles.
and you got these little pegs right here. Plastic pegs. So that's just some of your tokens right there. Yeah, that's some of your tokens. The case was included in my purchase, but again, they may not. They obviously do not come with the, uh, the game itself. So then we also have more tokens. Just when you think you don't have enough, you have even more. So let's open this up. So we'll start at the top. You've got tens. You've got fives. You've got ones. You've got a swarm of bats. Minus 10. Minus five, looks like health. And minus one. So it looks like to me, if I'm not mistaken, if I read the rules correctly, did it say that you had 20? No, no. That was a different game. I thought it said it had 20 uh, hit points, but no, the points are on there. So I'm going to have 18, right? It's right there on the sheet, right there by the medical sign. Uh, okay, then you have some skull trackers, it looks like. Front and backs are all the same. Let's go down to this last row down here. We have some tokens that look like this. So these are chests, obviously. We have some of these that look like that. Some rope. You have this, the other side, and then you have some Cthulhu looking ones. Okay, then you have this one here. There you go. So that's all of your tokens that are included in. Again, this is the base game. There are expansions that are available. No expansions were included in the purchase of this. And again, I purchased this in the secondary market. I purchased it in Facebook Marketplace. So rolling on, we have a plethora of game tiles. So I'm just going to clear this up just a little bit because we're going to run out of space here. Because there is a tremendous amount of stuff in this game. So I'm just going to put the dice back in the bag and throw them up top. Okay, get the dice out of the way so we have more room to show you even more stuff. So I'm going to put the dice on top of here so you see that. You know you have your stands for your standees. So I'll put that over here. Again, this is for all those characters. And these guys down here, I haven't figured out who they're for yet. But we'll, we'll figure that out before we, before we end here. Okay, so we have some game tiles and we have a huge amount of cards, right? Oh, before we show you that, come down to here. We have, again, a whole bunch of these. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, you could have up to six players in this game here. So I'm going to put this up top here like this. This you place on top of your card, like so, and it helps you to keep track of everything that you're using. That's why you have the six pegs, some green pegs that you had there. Put the pegs in here to keep track of everything that you got there. You got some dials. This is your health track. Okay. And this goes up to 20. So that's where I got the number 20 from, the health tracker. So she has a total of 18 health. So you'd start at 18. As she's getting beat up, just drop it back down. Then you have your audacity. You have, a, you have an audacity of one. And the maximum that you can have is seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten is the highest audacity that you can have. So it goes, the dial goes from one to ten. And it's the same for all of them. So again, we want to track the health. Put that over at number one as well. Again, there's your tracker there. Keeps track of all your stuff that's down here. Over here, it says uh, Courage Tracker here. All right. And then all your information up there about that. Okay. So if you look in the little dots right there, you can see if I look up real close, 
plus 10, plus 9, plus 8, plus 7, plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 1. So your health, so I, I got to put this in here, right? That's it. 8 plus 9, 5 plus 8. You see all the numbers up there. So 18, 5. Okay, so there you go. That's it. And you get six of these also on the back of it. It's just the same thing, just the holes in it. You really don't want much in there. But again, it's placed your again, everybody gets one of these and it gets placed in there just like that. And that's what it would look like. Okay. So again, you get six of those. Okay. And move this up just a little bit. Get your bag there for those guys there. Put the bag down here. Don't do that right now. That's on this side. Is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else on the other side. Nope. Okay. So we're rolling through here. We're at 35 minutes. I'm trying to uh, go as quickly as possible. You know, I don't want to keep you here all day. But again, as I said, this is a massive, massive box with a tremendous amount of stuff in here. And I really want to show you everything that's included in this game because again it's it's a fantastic game uh, i i played it at a convention one time and I, I just at the time didn't have the cash in which to get invested into it uh, and then when i saw it come up i wanted to get a copy of it so here i am picking it up so there you go you got your level three okay and again all the cards all the information you need so there's your starting tiles and over here it says stairs of blood over here, adjacent to sacrificial chamber. If not yet explored, search for and place on level one. So these things fit in just like that on each side. So the tiles just interconnect that way. So I put it that way or you put it this way, whichever way you can go through. So each tile has two sides. So you got level three, put that in there. You have this tile. Again, I'm not going to read everything that's on them. Just going to show you it's a level three tile. So these are all level three. Level two, level three. What are these over here? Level one, two, three. All right. So I'm just going to go go with it. It's not in any particular order. So here we go. You have the Crypt of Horus. It's a level two. You've got this the sword in the stone, Excalibur search. One level two. You have Lair of the Dragon King. Level three. You have the four heavenly kings. Level three. You have the Cave of Wonders. Aladdin's Lamp Search. No, I never saw the movie Aladdin. I heard it's very good, but I haven't watched it yet. Mongols Hall. You must explore the tomb to find your way here. And this is setup tile level 3-1. Do not shuffle into the tile stack. And this one is here, Pharaoh's Hall, adjacent to the Quetzalcoatl's Descent. And again, it says here, setup tile 2-1. Do not shuffle into the tile stack. So these are ones you're keeping separate. And there's a bunch of them here in a row that I'm doing that with. It says the same thing. It says set up tile level one, three. Do not shuffle it into it. All right. And this is Quasicodal's Descent, adjacent to Pharaoh's Hall. This is again set up tile for level one dash two. Do not shuffle into the deck. Quasicodal's Hall is right there. So again, for each adventure, you're gonna it's gonna tell you what your starting point is and which tiles you're gonna add into it. So it's all explained to you in the rule book and in, in the scenario books. So you got the tomb's entrance. Set up tile at level 1-1. Do not shuffle into the tile. So that's your starting point of the entire game. It's very cool. Then you got the armory. Level 1, 2, and 3. You've got a bridge, the uh, Illuminati Gallery. Look safe. You've got ceiling spike trap. There's some blood on the walls. Not good. Level one, two, three that can be used for. Chamber of the Ages. And level one and three that's used for. You have Fountain of Youth. When you rest in this room, you gain double health, which is always good to have. Level one and two for that. 
Over here, you have the Library of Alexandria. Again, level one, two, and three. Grand High Masonic Lodge. You've got Lake Cam, Lake Cam Pikachu. And then you've got here Terracotta Warrior Grave. With all the warriors in there and their statues. Level three. I think that was in one of the Indiana Jones films. Shrine of Fertility. Level one. Here you have Antichamber of Anubis. Level two. Here you have Shiva's Pit of Lava, level three. You have Shaki's Sphere of Power. You've got Shrine of the Fallen Warrior, level three. You've got the Sun Room of Amun Ra, level two. And you have the Final Frontier. It's the, not the final countdown, the final frontier. Space, it's the final frontier. These are the ongoing voyages of the Enterprise, of the Starship Enterprise, right? Again, five-year mission to explore strange new worlds. Seek out new life forms. Put these guys over here, still not figuring out who they're from and why they're here. All right, but we'll figure that out eventually. Put them up there with those guys. So we got some more tiles here. So let's go ahead. We got the Well of Souls. Level one and two. You have the Catacomb of the Crusades. Level one, two, and three. You've got a pitfall with rope adjacent to a Mongol's hall. You got to swing across. Level one and two. Make sure you bring rope with you or you have it to swing across. Lords of the Day, level one. Then you have Island Observatory, one, two, three. Then you have Set Corridor of Chaos, level two. Then you have Kefri's Nest of Scarabs, a bunch of beetles, level two. Then you have the River Styx. Then you have Cossair's Kosh. One, two, three. You have the Jade Temple. You have the Mine Shaft with rope adjacent to Mongols Hall. Then you have Leif Erikson's Grotto. One, two, three. You have El Dorado, level one. You have Mount Olympus, Zeus Bolt Search, one, two, and three. You have Quicksand, levels one, two, and three. You also have the Sacrificial Chamber, level one. Buddha's uh, Reliquiary. Level three. You have Osiris the Eternal. You have Davy Jones's Locker. Those one, two, and three. You have the Mayan Calendar. Level one. You have the Atrium of the Elder Sign, the Seal of Solomon Search. Creatures may not move through this room and exclude something, and then levels one, two, and three. You have the dark trap, as you're trying to get your way through there, and that's again level one and two. You have the labors of Hercules, the Aegis of Hercules search, levels one, two, and three. Then you also have the arc portal, action move your character to any explored room in the tomb, levels one, two, and three. So those are all of your tiles that included. 
and we've got lots of baggies to go on the side here. And then we have a, a plethora of different cards to go through, mini cards and large cards. So we'll go through these cards. Again, not exactly sure what each of the cards are used for, but we'll go through them anyway. So here we go, we got different Okay, these look like they are all villain cards. Okay, so we have this card to start off with. You have the Sphinx on both sides. So you have all your, all the cards are set up the same way. Title tells you what it is, a golem. Again, tells you that's a villain. Again, some special rules for it. All of its stat lines are right there. You flip it over. Looks like it's the same on front and back. Four, three, five, three, six, one, three. Three, four, three, five, three, six, one, three. So the numbers are front and back are the same. So we got the Sphinx. You got the Doppelganger. You have the Avatar of Kalima. You have Jack's Evermorning. Again, you have another Sphinx. You have the Vampiric Gargoyle. You have a Manticore, you have a Doppelganger, you have the Vesper Doppelganger, you have Terracotta Army Doppelganger, Doppelganger, Hound of Tindalos, the Doppelganger, a Skeleton Pirate, you have a Werewolf, another Skeleton Pirate, you have a Vampiric Gargoyle, a Dancing Scimitar, a Mongol Spirit Dragon Golem, Beast of the Orient, a Doppelganger again, the Elder Thing, Hound of Tindalos, the Juggernaut Jin, uh, Sagoth, Amigo, Unnameable Lich. All right, so that all falls under this category, so it may be for the different scenario so i see that card now they're switching up to this one so we got this card which is the same front and back so we have looks like a poisonous spider keeper of the tomb a siren a quest anaconda the terracotta warrior the quest anaconda the carnivorous scarabs stone spirit of olmec poison spider blackbeard's keepers Revolutionary Poltergeist, Quest Anaconda again, Keeper of the Tomb, Follower of Anubis, Zombie Conquistador, Keeper of the Tomb, Poison Spider, Blackbeard's Keepers, Enchanted Mori Man, Morai Man, Poison Spider, a Quest Anaconda, Stone Spirit of Olamec, a Deep One. You have Ultimate Enchantress, Revolutionary Poltergeist, Stone Pilot, Aspire, Stone Temple, Stone, Tem Stone Temple Pilot, no, Stone Spirit of Ulmec, Undead Raptor Pack, Blackbeard's Keepers, Quest Anaconda, Carnivorous Scarabs, Dwarvish Whipster, uh, A Menacing Mist, A Deep One, Tomb's Ear, or Tomb's Eye, a siren and Blackbeard's keepers. So that's we have that right here. So we got those two decks of villains right there. And then we have another deck of mini cards. They have front and backs on them. So we have lots and lots of information. I am not going to read all these cards, but it appears that we have some of them. So it says infected, physical, negative two. Then it says upkeep. And it tells you with one, it tells you what type of effect it's going to have. All the cards are set up the same. And then on the flip side, it says infected, physical. So undead, life and copy, uh, and then vampirism. So what happens to you? So you're lucky. Again, supernatural. So you have infected, it affects you physically, negative, and supernatural positive. So it's lucky. 
Fearless is mental positive. Hex is supernatural negative. Wings of Mercury, physical negative. Again, on the backs, it tells you what the changes are for it. Then you have Master of Time, supernatural positive. Wings of Mercury, physical negative. Regeneration, physical positive. Fearless, mental positive. Adrenaline, physical positive. Adrenical, adrenaline, physical positive. Adrenaline again. You have Courageous, mental positive. Courageous, mental positive. Another one. Master of Time, Supernatural Positives. Then you have Broken, Physical, Negative. Broken, Physical, Negative. Infected, Physical, Negative. Infected again. Blinded, Physical, Negative. Stumped, Mental, Negative. Wings of Mercury, Physical, Negative. Blessing of the Tomb, Supernatural, Positive. Lucky, supernatural positive. Regeneration, physical positive. Blessings of the tomb, supernatural positive. Fearless, mental positive. Courageous, positive. We have infected again. Physical, and that's a negative. Diseased, physical, negative. Targeted, supernatural, negative. Poison, physical, negative. Jinxed, supernatural, negative. Broken, physical, negative negative. Then you have broken physical negative. You have stumped mental negative. Regeneration physical positive. Jinx supernatural negative. Adrenaline physical positive. Curse of the tomb supernatural negative. You have afraid mental negative. Wings of mercury physical and that is negative. You've got hexed supernatural negative and master of time supernatural positive again the information you have it on the front so we can take a look on the back of these also if you want to go through them you have weakened poisoned bloodlust afraid curse of the tomb poisoned jinxed curse of the tomb curse of the tomb targeted bloodlust 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 weakened 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 afraid poison slowed targeted slowed stumped afraid Jinxed, infected, broken, broken, infected, infected, diseased, 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 hexed, slowed, infected, blinded, master of time, regeneration, lucky, broken, broken, hexed, lucky, blessing of the tomb, fearless, slowed, stumped, and targeted. So again, lots of cards. This one, all of them are front and back. So those are also things that can be either positive or negative attributes for your character. Not sure how you get those, but you do get them. Okay, so we have more adventures and the villains that you'll be fighting in there. And looks like you have a weapon deck also of things that you can find. So let's see, we got this, we got that, we got this, we got that. Okay, those are all treasures that you can find. We'll put that to the side. We have some hats, we have some chalices, then we have a, not quite sure what that is exactly, we're going to look that, figure that out, and then we have some, a whole bunch of treasure chests, so that's the good stuff that you'll find that will help your characters, hopefully on your way through your journey. So let's take a look at the hat real quick. All the fronts or backs, depending on how I look at it, are all the same. Flip it over. It says, the Scotsman. So it's title, character, and then it tells you what you gain from this. Okay, Scotsman. Earl Hawk. Gorgeous. Trianta Felids. Sir Lawrence of Britain. Soul of Santori. Siddhar Sandeep Singh. Pablo Green Ghost Garcia. Mia Rosenberg, The Singing Scimitar, Landon Rabbit's Foot Jace, Joseph Marks, Hey Reddit Barbosa, Roger DeMartin, Katerina Fedekov. So it looks like these are people who can be possibly helping you out or adversaries who are coming to take away what you're trying to capture. Then you have the chalices here. Let's see what the chalice does. Chalice, Aladdin's Lamp, an artifact. 
Seal of Solomon, an artifact. The Ages of Hercules, armor one ha ha uh, handed. Cowl, the Cowl of Anubis, armor head. Uh, Masamun, the Deathbringer, strength two handed. Amulet of Lin, artifact. Zeus's Lightning Bolt, dexterity two handed. The Ruby Scarab, artifact. Franklin Keystone, artifact. The Urn of Divergence, artifact. The Elder Sign, artifact. The Necronomicon, artifact. The Staff of Ra, Mythos, two-handed. And then Excalibur, Strength and Mythos, one-handed. So these are the artifacts you're looking for during your journey. So I'm gonna put that here. And then we also have these cards. So now we're gonna figure out what these are all about. But these are, uh, looks like they could be positive. Okay, looks like possibly Breastplate, Armor. Sagittarius bow equipment, Soulmonger's rope equipment, uh, circlet of mentality, shadow blade revolver, uh, lion's breath, map of the tomb of uh, tombs traps. You have oh, these are equipment cards. So you have heart soup, crystal ball, Wendega's ward, essence of souls. That's a trap. You have uh, robes of the Illumis Templars armor, map of the tomb's rooms, you have equipment, soul pentacle, equipment, eldritch rune, equipment, panacea, equipment, and then you have soulmonger great stone, and that is equipment, so that's just, that's the soulmonger right there, that's what that means, that's the S there, okay, it's the soulmonger cards, so we have those as well, I'm going to flip those over, put those up like that, and then, of course, you have your treasures that you can come up, find and get while exploring. So we'll go through these quickly. Fast drawn revolver, a serrated dagger, enchanted blade, a tommy gun, a 45 caliber 1911 pistol, bullwhip, sword king, grappling hook, rocket launcher, M1A1 flamethrower, healing sob, bandages, jug of rum, military saber, 45 caliber 1911 pistol, M1A rifle, gouges gauntlets, leather jacket, battle axe, map of the tombs traps, enchanted blade, pith helmet, bowie knife, machete, machete, serrated, serrated dagger, leather jacket, elephant gun, badge of courage, Winchester rifle, healing salve, map of the tombs rooms, ear hearts goggles, medieval helm, machete, 45 caliber 1911 pistol, Luger pistol, leather jacket, fedora, magnifying glass, skate boots, bandages, bowie knife, the fedora again, jug of rum again, bandages, bull whip, and throwing knives. All the cards are set up identical. They'll tell you what uh, power that it works with, the title of the the title of the item, what the dexterity that you need to use it, picture of the item, and then it tells you what it does right there. Okay, so that's another set of cards. Running out of room up here. Put them over here like so. Okay, I don't want to cover them up. So I'm just going to put this card deck over here. And we have another deck of cards right here. Clocking in at 58 minutes. When I told you to get yourself something to eat and drink, I wasn't kidding this time around. So right off the bat, I see a whole bunch of different cards. All right, so we'll take them out for you. Let's see which are the last two. Okay, these are all of your different adventures. Okay, which I don't, not gonna, there's a tremendous amount of reading on some of these cards. So I'm not gonna do that policy here for you. So right here, we have some characters right here. We have Hera Thulu. Again, all their stats are right there. Tells you information about them. On the flip side of that, you have, again, the same thing on front and on back. You have Protean, the ever-changing. You have Prince Barun, the Forsaker. You have the Kraken. So these are your uh, major villains. Uh, the Wendega. Blackbeard, the Possessed. Raz Azul's Ahmet. And then you have Omnibo Murmasa, the Dark Soul. 
So these are the ones that you are, these, I guess I could say, are the on the top level, the ones you're going to have to fight, the villains that you're going to have to fight uh, to basically be victorious in your uh, adventures. So we're going to take those cards, put those over here. Those are your key villains. You also have a deck of cards that looks like this. And so here is all I need is duct tape, tomb effect, move creatures, level one, two, and three, upkeep, search, and track. Evil that men do. So I'm not sure what these cards are used for. I see we have some room to split into red piles and green piles. So I'm not quite sure, again, what these cards are used for. They are mixed in together. So I'm going to just separate them from the green and the red. Looks like there's less red than there are green, so let's start with those. Let's try right off the bat here. Again, all the fronts are identically the same, so I'm guessing you shuffle them together. Okay, the Wrath of Shiva, Tomb Effect, Move Creatures, Creature Combat, Spawn Creatures. All right, so this looks like it's telling you what you're going to do when, so you pull the card, it tells you what's going to happen in the room. So that's, maybe it's directing it that way. So you got the Wrath of Shiva, Angel of Darkness, Dark Side of the Moon, Feeling Exposed, A Brush with Death, Nowhere to Run, Black Ice, White Death, Brace for Impact, We're Gonna Need a Bigger Gun, Frozen in Time, Change of the Dark One, Cold Shot, and the Dragon's Roar. That's your red cards with this backing on it. Again, all the cards have this backing on it that we're going over right now. So I'm gonna put those over there. And then you have the green ones, which are right here again. But they have the green, those have the red, these have the green. All I need is duct tape, evil that men do, courage is a triumph over fear, living history, scream and scream again, death in small doses, don't touch anything, must go faster, blood of the earth, falling skies, don't make me angry, the pen is mightier than the sword, blessings from above, misguided and treacherous thoughts, no place to hide, might equals right, Dead men don't run. I'll think of something. In the shadows, mischief creeps. Running out of ammo. Fury from the deep. More lives than dead. And everything is not enough. Again, has again all the cards are set up exactly the same way. Tomb effect. Move creatures. Creature combat. Spawn creatures level one. One of this. Level three. One of that. Upkeep. Search. Comet track. So it looks like these are effect cards of some kind. So there you have that. And last but not least, you have the Secrets of the Lost Tomb. So all of your adventures are based around these. And depending on what level you are, one, two, or three, it will tell you what is going on. Again, I'll give you one example of one of these cards. I'm not going to read through all of them because there's a tremendous amount of... So remember at the beginning of the game, we talked about when we went through the rulebook, you had adventures and misadventures. So you had adventures are good things, adventures are bad things. As you can tell... Tremendous amount of reading on both sides of the cards. So I'll just give you a kind of a flavor for what these are. Again, this card goes with that. It's the Secrets of the Lost Tomb, Adventures and Misadventures. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody, so I'm not going to read through these, but I'm going to show you at least one of the cards. As you step through a portal, a tingling, popping feeling washes over you. When it subsides, you see a large round table covered in rotting food. Seated, there are 13 dead warriors clad in armor and a king holding a golden sword. So what are you going to do? The king rises and you hear him speak in your head. You are the one. Save us all. Something floats into the air and lands right into your hand. You feel a powerful force push you back to reality. All the warriors rise with the king and they turn their backs to you. You are not the one. You hear as you transport with a flashback to the dark, empty room. Tingles ripple from your head to your toe, but otherwise you feel rather ordinary. You get minus one something for that. Now you got a misadventure. Again, I'm just going to read one of these cards. As you can see, there's a tremendous amount of them. I'm not going to go through all of these. But here we go, a misadventure on the back of that card. You thought you were in the tomb, but all of a sudden you awaken in the middle of an ancient arena. The Emperor of Rome sits above staring at you. You hear the rumbling of a chariot racing towards you. You jump over the horse, kicking the ridge off, and take the reins. Pass. You steer through a portal to the tomb. Fail, you're caught with an arrow and wake up on the next on the wet floor of the tomb. 
Emperor stands, puts out his hand, and points to his thumb down. You turn just in time to be run down by a speeding chariot. You waken in the tomb injured and have lost three health and are staggered. So all these are adventures and misadventures. Again, there are a plethora of these in the game. And I'm not going to read through them all. That would take quite a considerable amount of time. So we're going to throw those back here. Those are the secret of the tomb cards. And last thing that we're going to do today, and we are at an hour and five minutes. I apologize for as long as it's taking, but I am going as fast as I can. I got to tell you, there is a tremendous amount of stuff. And the last thing, like I said, I'd share with you are the figures that come with the game. They're on the skinny side, but again, they're from they're all the adventurers. So if you don't want to use those stands, you can use the figures themselves. There's one. Guy who looks like Indiana Jones, the bullwhip and the pistol and the fedora. There's him. Again, a little bendy at the same time. Put in some hot water, they'll bend right back into place. There's another one. Again, not the greatest detail on them, but again, they'll make do. They'll do just fine in the game. And again, if you don't want to use these, you can always use your figures, which are your standees, which look like that. So in this game, I might be willing to use this, but again, in certain situations, I might use those. Here's two more, the general with the two blades. Got the guy with the rifle. You have the judo expert. You've got the guy with the Tommy gun. Guy kneeling down, aiming his rifle, the shotgun. You have this gentleman here with the knife. Smartest guy in, in, in the game. He's got a bazooka that he's carrying. So, yep, bring him along. That's the guy I want every time. Bad guy shows up, shoot him in the face with the bazooka. Then you have a guy with a sword and a briefcase. And you also have one last figure, which is her. And she's leaning a little bit. Put her in hot water. She'll stand right back up. And there you have it with two pistols. So, this, oh, and we have one more guy, and we have a baggie that, a nice baggie that it comes with. This guy has something in his hands, I can't really quite make out what he's got in there. But he matches one of these characters down here. So there you have it. That is everything that's included, and this concludes our unboxing of the board game, the epic board game secrets of the lost tomb the cooperative pulp action adventure board game an action-packed game of immersive story driven themes and strategic tomb exploration for the fate of the world a board game for one to six brave adventurers brought to you by everything by everything epic for more information go to everything epic Dot com. You can also go to secretsofthelosttomb.com as well. This game is for one to six players, ages 13 plus, and it lasts about 120 minutes. So it's a two-hour game and a one-hour unboxing. Phew, that was a lot. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, you could always give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. You could also hit that subscribe button. This way you're kept up to date as to any time we release new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining us today. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.